Hey guys, Thunder E here, and I've got a behemoth 85 inch TV right behind me. I am talking about the Samsung Q950TS. It only comes in one size. Yes, that's right, 85 inches, and it is a beast. Now, before we go ahead, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit that notification icon, and let's jump in. So, Everyone is buying a TV now, and we know why. We're stuck at home, and you know we've got to watch content, we've got to play our games, there are new consoles out there, the Xbox Series X, the PlayStation 5. But why go for an 85 inch TV? First of all, screen size, this thing is huge. It is massive. It, is, it, is, it just takes up a lot of space. It's an 8K TV, and uh, watching content on here really will blow your mind. It's hard to go back from using this television set. But what does it offer? Besides just being 85 inches in 8K, it packs in a ton of features. So Samsung has uh, something called the Delta V stand that makes it feel like it's floating. When you look at the TV on the side or in front, it looks like it's tilted back slightly in floating. It's a, it's a different look and feel. Of course, you can mount this on your wall if you want to. Now the TV also has 70 watt speakers. The speakers are built to the side of the TV. So you get the speakers coming from either side and there's subwoofers in the back giving you some really clean, clear sound. Don't take my word for it. Take a listen. So yeah, it, it sounds good, it's great. It almost takes away the need for a soundbar, but of course a soundbar will add a different element for you. And whether you're watching YouTube videos, you're watching a movie, um, any kind of content, it looks really good. Or even when you are gaming, this TV looks good and sounds well, especially playing on the brand new consoles, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. This TV supports the, what you need for next-gen consoles. So of course it's got Four HDMI ports, one of them is HDMI 2.1, which is a sad part because I wished all four ports were HDMI 2.1, but just one. So if you've got both consoles, you gotta basically switch back and forth to ensure you get the best capabilities. But as you can see here off the Xbox Series X, it supports all that except Dolby Vision. Now, this TV also has a one connector box. That box houses all the ports and all the processing power for the TV. So you just have one cable going from that, one connector box, to your TV. And put it this way, it's a smart thing that Samsung has done here. If anything happens in terms of the internals on the TV, say uh, the sound processing doesn't work well, you just ship that back, they ship you a new one, and boom, your TV works. You don't have to ship this whole 85 inch out the way, which would be crazy. Now, the TV runs Tizen OS. It's Something that Samsung's used for a while. It's pretty smooth, it works effectively. And I like the way that all your apps are docked in front so you can easily jump into your shows and also jump into the, your various gaming consoles. TV has a game mode, which will automatically detect once your console turns on, which is nice. Now, the remote control is simple and clean. It's one of the older designs, uh, but I do like the design quite a lot. I like the silver look on it. It's got three editions this year, which are a Netflix button, an Amazon button, as well as also the Samsung TV Plus. Now, Samsung TV Plus allows you to scroll through and look at content if you don't have content to watch. Speaking of content, how does uh, move, how do move? It looks crisp. I mean, BVS still looks as good as ever. That green kryptonite really shines and stands out. And that's something I think a lot of people will like. But we are gamers, and we talked about the fact that this has HDMI 2.1 port. And I've been playing on my Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. How is that experience? What does it look like? How does it feel? Those are the questions you want to know. And let's take a look at what it actually brings in to the table with the Samsung Q950TS. So as a gamer, 
I mean, I had to get both consoles and I've been using both the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 for about a month or so extra. Both consoles have benefits and disadvantages. And on a TV like this, it's easy to highlight a lot of those features. One of the very first things to look at, of course, is the menu system. Now, both menus, yes, they're different styles. I'm not gonna talk about that specifically, but they look really good. Now, the Xbox Series S, X menu looks nice and clean, and it looks sharp and vibrant until you look at the PlayStation 5 menu. Now, what you don't know is the Xbox Series X is at 1080p from the menu, and the PlayStation is at 4K or a higher resolution. So when you're upscaling to 8K, the 4K definitely looks sharper and more vibrant than the um, uh, 1080p. So that's something you will probably notice if you watch carefully on both, from both consoles. Now, when it comes to games and gaming, what have I been playing on both consoles. Now, for the PlayStation 5, I'm playing Spider-Man Miles Morales. I like the game, it plays well. You've got different options for doing performance mode. You can do performance with ray tracing, and the game looks really, really nice. I'm playing it right now on high fidelity, and it looks sharp, it looks great, but you can play it in different modes, and the game works really well. On the, on the Xbox Series X, I've been playing Cyberpunk 2077. Before that, I was playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and I was playing a bunch of games on there. But right now, Cyberpunk 2077 looks good. It looks sharp. I'm playing in fidelity mode. It looks really good. And again, this game consoles push a lot. But when it comes to the idea of where I'm playing, I'm spending more time playing games, it's gotta be the Xbox Series X because I've got a larger library of games. Now, some people would say, well, PlayStation has the new exclusives and they do have more exclusives. But the fact that I can jump in and play a game like Cyberpunk 2077, yes, that's on the PlayStation 5, but I can also switch immediately with Quick Resume to say um, a game like uh, Mortal Kombat, and that's a great feature as well on the Xbox uh, Series X, and then play a brand new game that came out, at least a game that came out this year, like Control, without spending any extra cash. So I spent money to buy Cyberpunk 2077, and that's it. The rest I have on my Xbox Game Pass, while I spent $120 on the PlayStation 5 to buy Demon's Soul and, and Spider-Man Miles Morales, and I am only playing Spider-Man Miles Morales. So do the economy of skills there, it makes sense, especially when you're thinking of buying a TV and gaming on a console. Now, of course, these consoles do have some new features and they have new controllers. Now, the Xbox Series X controller is new, but it's not vastly different from its last generation. Some more improvements, some fine tuning. It's more of an iteration of a controller. The PlayStation 5 controller, on the other hand, yes, it's new. It's new, it feels much better, and it's got a lot of cool new features. Now, which controller feels better to me? I say they both feel the same. I'm not a fan of the trigger of the joystick location of the PlayStation 5, but I do like the fact that they've improved the controller. I know it's got a ton of new features, but it doesn't change a lot of my gameplay right now, and we'll have to wait and see what developers do and bring to the table. So that is something that's quite interesting there. Now, something that the PlayStation 5 can do with this Samsung Q950 TS, and for some reason the Xbox Series X cannot do, is being able to use the Samsung TV remote to navigate my PlayStation 5. That's why I have that right behind me, and I can navigate through while using this remote. So my PlayStation controller is here, I'm holding it, I'm not pressing any buttons, and I'm navigating through the menus. So for instance, if I power up my PlayStation 5 and I wanna go ahead and just watch a movie or watch jump into a TV show, I can go ahead, go to media, and then I can start navigating and watch some Mando or watch something off Netflix. Very easy and very simple. So I like that. On the Series X, for some reason, I can't do it. I know I could do that on the Xbox uh, One X uh, when I had that, but for whatever reason, maybe it's just an option or something, it just doesn't work there. Now, speaking of issues or bugs on both consoles, what I've experienced is while playing and using it, using it on this TV. My PlayStation 5 has crashed about three times, the times I've noticed, and that's about it. I don't have a lot of crashes on it. I'm not using an external hard drive. This is the only times it's crashed on me. My Xbox Series X has had an issue where each time I start a game, and it started when I downloaded it, uh, Cyberpunk 2077, uh, I would have to basically uh, unplug and plug in the HDMI port, but it's happened about three times or so. so Again, 
that too is not something widespread. This is one of the issues I've had with the consoles. I think overall, when you look at both the Series X and the PlayStation 5, they are great consoles. They bring the kind of fidelity of performance as a PC gamer I can see. Now, playing on an 85 inch TV, it is unreal. I mean, this is something you have to experience. I wish that I could afford a TV like this. I wish you could afford the TV like this. It's about $11,000. It's not for everyone, but if you've got the space and you've got the cash and you want a TV that has a lot of room uh, to just give you high fidelity, it works quite well. Um, well, another thing to mention with this TV is the fact that watching in daytime and playing in daytime, it's really good. Reflections, things like that, it doesn't affect your viewing in, in comparison to say like an OLED. So that is something to take note, especially if you've got a lot of big windows and you're using the TV as such. So guys, if you have any questions or any comments about the Samsung Q950 TS, let me know. Or you want to get some more information on the Xbox Series X, or the PlayStation 5, leave your thoughts down below. And if you want to see me do a review on the Xbox Series S, leave those thoughts as well. This is Thunder E saying thank you and always enjoy your entertainment.